When I started off in 1995 as an amateur radio operator, I was not aware of crimping PL259 connector and had a tough time soldering the outer sheath of the coaxial cable to the outer conductor of PL259. This time I thought of attempting crimping a PL259 connector on to the cut end of RG213 cable. Other end had a pre-crimped PL259 connector. Here are the three components of the PL259 connector seen separately. Heat shrink sheath VW1 which came along with PL259 has already been inserted over the cut end of RG213. Outermost screw in part of PL259 was then inserted over the RG213 coaxial cable. Length of outer sheath of the RG213 to be removed was marked using a small scalpel blade. I had to use a bigger knife to carefully remove the outer protective sheath of the coaxial cable. After that, the tubular crimping part of PL259 was introduced over the coaxial cable on the braid after removing a thin polyethylene covering over it. Innermost part of PL259 was then introduced inside the tubular part in such a way that it goes between the metallic braid of the coax and the thick inner dielectric. The inner conductor of RG213 reached up to the tip of the inner conductor of PL259 plug. Outer part of PL259 connector was then slided over the heat shrink and gradually turned to reach a little away from the tip as seen here. Copper wire strands in the inner conductor of RG213 can be clearly seen at the tip. Inner conductor of PL259 was soldered carefully to the copper wire strands of RG213 using a 65 watt soldering iron, soldering paste and solder wire. Tip of the soldered region was carefully scraped a little so that it would fit smoothly within an SO239 connector of the ballon. Otherwise, extra solder at the tip will cause splaying of the inner conductor of SO239. Multimeter was used to make sure that there was no continuity between the two conductors of PL259. After that, PL259 at the other end of RG213 was shorted using a wire and continuity tested at this end to make sure that there is no open circuit.